So welcome guys. Welcome Eric and uh, happy Thursday to everybody. So um, we're here with our weekly webinar. Um, and this week we have a special guest and you'll start to see a lot more of him as we progress, especially through uh, the, the next year. Um, but joining us today is Eric LeClaire. And so Eric is, um, he's heading up one of our specialty projects at Push Press. Um, and we're really excited about because that, what he's heading up um, and that we've kind of dubbed Event X um, is a, a unique side project. And I don't want to diminish it by saying it's a side project, um, but us as Push Press, we've always been product focused. Um, you know, we've created this system, this platform, and you know, what Eric is bringing to the table is something completely different that complements um, this overall message that we're trying or mission that we're trying to accomplish, which is to um, help businesses succeed. And so what Eric is, is heading up is Event X, um, which is essentially an education resource to be able to um, guide business owners, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, guide business owners into um, strategically planning, launching, and executing uh, community events at their facilities. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it can start uh, in the gym and it can very, very quickly uh, kind of move outside of the gym. And the reach for these types of programs are, are fantastic, whether you look at it from a recruiting tool or you just use them purely as a retention tool. Yeah, I know you had some pretty good success so far in the, the first round of, uh, of beta event X uh, gym. So that's that's been good. Yeah. Um, so going back to what we'll focus on today and the reason why we're on this call is, um, you know, we're, we are coming up to the end of the year um, and a big thing and, and an opportunity towards the end of every year is the opportunity to plan and get ahead of the next year and improve on, um, you know, how the previous year went. And so what Eric is going to walk us through today is um, his strategy for being able to kind of understand the macro of, of um, annual planning and then break it down into more manageable chunks. Um, he just walked me through his example and, and his kind of uh, presentation, and I think it's it's amazing. Um, and when you kind of take a step back to see, you know, exactly what all goes into your business and what could potentially go into your business, there's a ton of opportunity um, to just grow your business. Um, not that you have to take action every little bit, but every bit does help, and that all hinges on having a plan. Um, so I'll stop talking, Eric. If you want to uh, just kind of kick things off and then uh, we can share your screen. Right on, man. James, thank you so much. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Eric LeClaire. I'm the owner of Team CrossFit Academy, uh, originally in Monrovia, California. Uh, we affiliated or affiliated with CrossFit in 2005. And we opened our first brick and mortar facility in 2006. Uh, we started in about 1,500 square feet. A couple of years later, we moved into about a 7,000 square foot facility. And a few years later, we moved into a 15,000 square foot facility. And actually, just last year, um, I retired from actual full ownership and full operations on the floor in preparation to move. My wife and I uh, and our brand new baby girl are preparing to move from Los Angeles uh, out to Tennessee. So we actually sold uh, to one of our assistant coaches, uh, head coach. Now he's the owner. That's uh, Aaron Glenn Seely, And he is now running operations under uh, the company named Seely Strength in Monrovia. But it's, I can tell you from 2006 forward, the growth and the development of the affiliate landscape has been fantastic. So whether we're, whether we're a brand new gym getting started or whether you're an intermediate gym, a couple of years in, three years in, five years in, or you've been in for a while, um, the goal is to be able to, to plan forward to make better decisions faster without being stuck or without being uncertain or without being nervous. For those of you guys that actually have some background in uh, business operations, you can use uh, the annual plan, of course, to think forward and strategize saying, what did we do well versus what did we execute poorly? And let's hope to improve upon those things that we did poorly um, looking forward. So uh, both James and I get a chance to weekly work with gym owners. And what we found is that gym owners classically will live in kind of a, a couple of different buckets when it comes to plant the planning phase. They'll either absolutely have no idea whatsoever what they're doing. To be honest with you, a lot of the coaches that I talk to, they don't have a plan. They don't have a financial plan. They don't have a programming plan. They don't have a business model plan. They're just kind of guessing their way through uh, the affiliate landscape, the ownership or the head coaching position. And so we're really here to help those owners 
kind of create at least a bit of a framework. It, it may not be the exact correct framework uh, that fits their model, but what they can do is take it and work from there. The other end of the spectrum is we do run into coaches that are goal-oriented, focused, they understand intentions, they set clear guidelines for the future, and you literally have to just press on and they go, right? So either way, we hope that you can take away some information today, whether you're that advanced or veteran gym owner, or you're the brand new gym owner. As a matter of fact, I talked to one yesterday, uh, literally brand new, opening their gym in January, and they're going to be excited to take a look at some of the information that we have. So uh, may I go ahead and share the screen? Is that cool? Absolutely. Please do. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and share uh, what is going to uh, really is going to be a, an opportunity for you to just kind of read through, kind of listen. We'll have time for Q&A, I think, at the end. And then what we'll do is we'll send this kind of worksheet out for you as a sample or as an example. What this is is a designed level of operations, uh, both my facility and a little bit of operations around some of the best facilities that I've visited uh, in the last 15 or so years. So let me go ahead and get this up so you guys can take a look at it. We're going to start uh, kind of big to small and go through that. Hopefully you guys can see that. James, if I he cannot, let me know. Okay, uh, some of the key phrases first that I want you to be thinking about is the first phrase is we look back to look forward. The key here is to kind of do an after action review on your company and provide some insights from yourself, your staff, and your teammates based on your company core values, any financial goals, any academic growth or community and culture improvement or development, as well as your desire for your life to change or improve. Your 2019 data, or basically everything you did over the course of the year, is significantly important and helps paint a picture for going forward, okay? It will help you guide, order, organize, and even orchestrate to prioritize the rest of the year. And if you miss it, if you don't take a chance to look to the rear, you may end up making the same or worse mistakes going forward. I can't tell you how many times I've spoken to gym owners and they just don't understand why year after year after year, their July and August sales are the worst over the course of the entire year, but yet they don't do anything to solve for that. They're not thinking about that in May or June to kind of shore up their weaknesses or their down, uh, downturn financially in July and August. So a concept I want you to walk away with today is thinking big to small. What I mean by that is I want you to think yearly, down to quarterly, down to monthly, down to weekly. And for some coaches, especially coaches that love the programming aspect of training, they'll want to work all the way down to the day-to-day -day tasks and operations that go on in the gym. For those coaches that like writing programming, you'll understand the macro down through the meso, down to the micro scale. That's the yearly scale, down quarterly, monthly, weekly, and so on. A casual association that I use, especially with a lot of my coaches, is that we look at the entire year as that 100-mile ultra endurance race. The whole year right, is an endurance event in business. Right? You're going to make it an entire year. So you cannot have errors up front or you will not make the entire year. Halfway through the year, we've made it 50 miles. A couple of months in, we've made it through the marathon. And week by week, you've got sprints. Now, sprints are you know, classically used as opportunities to solve problems or to create product or to get something out to market or to um, improve upon something. So you might have hundreds of little sprints throughout the course of the year, and that helps you move that needle or move that success marker um, so that you make it one more calendar year. What we're going to do is we're going to start on this list. This is just a, a basic template. We're going to talk company operations first, and we're going to scroll ourselves down. Now, this is not a complete list. This is just simply a creative thinking project for you. What I want you to be thinking about is how many of you gym owners or head coaches are currently doing the things that we list? And if you are, fantastic. How many of you are not doing these things, and are you interested in improving upon your system? Or how many of you have better ways of doing this? And so by all means, we're always involved and interested in learning. So let's take it forward. In the first bracket under red is going to be company operations. What this will not include is the daily financial check-ins, which of course you need to be having your finger on the pulse of your finances every single day. On the right-hand side column, we've got any mentorship meetings. These are things that are going to happen with companies like Two Brain Business, Mad Lab, and or um, the new product that's coming out, Push Start here with Push Press run by uh, Zach, who I think he's in Thailand right now, or he would be with us today. So we'll have vacation, yep. probably in a week or so to continue to talk about uh, push start. So team and staff meetings, again, blown away. How many gym owners I talk to that 
aren't having consecutive or at least cyclical team and staff meetings. Any coach, trainer, intern, staff reviews, right? We can't expect excellence out of our coaches unless we're giving them the parameters with which we want them to improve upon. And we've got to have meetings with our staff just like we expect to have meetings with our clients. What I recognize uh, and one of the reasons why I genuinely appreciate the community at Push Press is that Push Press uh, to their consumer base are caring about helping improve gym owners' lives and gym owners' businesses, just like the gym owners are caring to help and improve their clients' lives. We feed forward that level of excellence and the key here is always about caring and helping. So any hiring or intern pipelines, are those gonna start quarterly? Are those gonna start only every six months? Who's going to school? Do you have coaches that actually are still in school or individuals that are just wrapping up degrees? How often do you go over your social media to include? How often do you take a look at your website, check into your Google, do any SEO review? As well, how often are you looking at your business systems? Are you looking at things to improve the amount of money you actually spend? So if we can look to a place where we can cut expenses, it's a chance for us to maintain or improve over the course of the year. And I'm talking about everything, right? Billing companies, music companies, internet companies. How often are you guys meeting with or discussing bookkeeping, meeting with your CPA or your tax professional and or your human resources personnel? Who's going on vacation? Where are they going? When are they going, right? You don't want half of your staff gone because they all think they're planning on leaving at the exact same month, whether it's in the summer or the winter. Are you hosting or conducting any staff team building events? This can be in-house in your facility or this can be out of your facility. What became very popular in the Los Angeles area of the last couple of years have been escape rooms. And so we've tried to take out big groups of our uh, staff out to local escape room and that, that was uh, received very well. CEU certifications, both hosting at your facility or traveling to who's hosting a level one, who's heading out to do a powerlifting seminar, who's hosting a kettlebell clinic or a kettlebell seminar, who's heading off to do something else. Maybe you're visiting a different facility uh, maybe you're heading to Scottsdale, maybe you're going out to an OPEX certification, maybe you're going out to Brand X certification. Whatever you're doing, you want to make sure that it's on the list ahead of time so that you can staff for coaches that are going to be gone or staff appropriately for a closure that might occur if you're hosting a certification on a weekend. Any volunteer programs that you belong to or your coaches do? Any local or global partnerships? This could be business partnerships. Um, this can be something like partnerships with a local running store, a local brewery, a local cycle shop. Um, it could be something like a restaurant. It could be something like a local uh, mechanic shop who happens to be a member and wants to partner with your facility. Remember that a partnership, whether local or global, needs to facilitate a win on both sides, not just a win for their business, but a mutual or a reciprocal win for your gym as well. When do you throw in the apparel pre-orders and when do you throw in the supplement pre-orders? And then honestly, what most folks don't do is when are you checking your equipment on the floor and or when are you overhauling any first aid or EMS equipment on the floor? For those gyms that are mandated, which I think at this point, all gyms are mandated to have AEDs. When are you checking the batteries? When are you running through any classes? When are you doing emergency preparedness meetings with your staff? In the, in, in the God forbid case that somebody drops and needs attention, the whole staff needs to be trained for that. So that's a really important piece. So the red components are basically top-down uh, company operations. Again, there's probably plenty of stuff on here that you do as gym owners that actually would improve this list. So by all means, in the Q&A after or in the feedback feature, whether it's on Facebook Live, whatever it is, feel free to share with us some of the best practices in your gym from a company standpoint that allows you to be further prepared for, of course, the next year. Now, this is just a very small portion of this spreadsheet. I'll zoom out here at the end, and we'll talk about how these things get slotted quarterly or so on. Um, James, any questions? Anything you want to fill in on anything in company ops? Feel good? Yeah, I mean, again, like I mentioned earlier, there, I'm guilty of uh, forgetting some of these things. Um, we all are. And so just, just having a resource to be able to, to, to see even if we're not able to get to it, uh, just to bring it back to front of mind, I think is really beneficial. Uh, again, just in terms of just planning. Right. Um, you, you don't know what you don't know, right? I agree 100%, 100%. This, is just, this will grow over time. And really, if we're talking about the beginning owner who doesn't have even a business yet, this is a great framework for them to say, 
one day I will move into that space and be able to do team parties or team building events or, you know, shoot, I didn't even think about it. I have to meet with my CPA every quarter or, you know, whatever. Those are just reminders, cues, like we're coaching cues, right, for clean and jerk and snatch. These are business cues, right, for coaches and owners to remember, like, things that they have to do. Okay, we're going to move into blue, and blue is advertising and marketing programs. These are things for people uh, classically externally that are not yet your clients. So we talk about things like open houses. Open houses are things that are done uh, inside your facility. Community events that are done outside of your facility. Company and corporate speeches, whether you've got corporate areas that you can go and present to, whether you're talking on basic lifestyle guidelines, maybe you're having a discussion around nutrition considerations or nutrition prescriptions. Maybe you're talking about sleep and stress considerations. I mean, any time you get a chance to get out in front of an audience and speak, it's a great opportunity to market your brand. Uh, social media, individual competitions and social media team-based competitions. These are fantastic because it, of course, gets your brand out in front of people, leveraged and launched externally by your current clientele. In blue, what this does not cover, though, and we should cover it again sometime in the future, is your daily social media content calendar. This could be something driven specifically by you. It could be something driven in conjunction with all your coaches or it can be even driven in conjunction with an external source who happens to write for you. It's done a hundred different ways, so whatever works best for you, we want you to do. Um, photo shoots and video shoots, believe it or not, this is a great way to improve upon the media you present, and it's great to host photo shoots or video shoots at your facility. We know that there have been some very successful business owners that podcast, they run great IGTV and YouTube channels, uh, whether it's just tutorials on training and or tutorials on lifestyle improvements, there have been some gyms that have struck gold by utilizing these platforms. Again, not an exhaustive list on platforms, just ones I personally know of coaches and owners that have hit success. Any ambassador programs or exclusive partnerships? Ambassador programs might be a way for you and or another new business in your area to both promote each other and or an exclusive partnership, very similar to Push Press's exclusive partnership with Base 10 uh, this might be something that you share and have an ability to deliver a higher value because if you are an exclusive partner, you can only get the value working with a very specific company. So if we have an exclusive relationship with an apparel company or an exclusive relationship with a shoe store, only my clients are going to get that discount at that shoe store or only my clients are going to get an exclusive percentage off of the supplement company or a, a food vendor company. That's a key thing to think about is how can you leverage that term exclusivity? Are you writing blogs, right? So internal, external blogs. Internal blogs are going to be basically for either your website or for content consumed by your current clientele. And external blogs are you as a guest writer or guest, um, yeah, a guest writer for somebody else's blog. You could be a subject matter expert on something like supplementation or nutrition. You could be a subject matter expert on endurance, powerlifting, weightlifting, whatever. And the key there is that your content helps to educate the outside population, but also drives attention and eyes back onto you. Same thing with local newspaper articles and or local fairs and festivals. Are you getting your voice, your opinion, your excellence, and your brand out in front of others? That's the key. Lastly, we've got any local walks and runs and or charity events. Now, Hopefully, you've uh, positioned yourself to be able to participate in charities at least once or maybe twice a year. Maybe you have some competitions that will benefit a specific charity. Um, a very popular one that's done here in our area at the end of the year um, is 8 a.m. Pharmacy's Gift to Lift, where the registration is simply an unwrapped toy. That's a fantastic way to help kids improve upon their experience at Christmas and you to get a chance to do an excellent workout with a teammate. So in blue, just a real quick recap, these are things that get you outside of your own facility, that get you out of the office, off the floor, away from the barbell, and get you in front of others. You could list network marketing groups, you could list speech groups, uh, you could list school functions, you could list college functions, you could list you know, whatever it is. There's so much excellent work on the marketing side to solicit potential new business to come in and take a look at you. Anything I missed, James, or anything that you think we could add to the blue that you've seen successful uh, in the past? So I mean, so um, you know, being in a, a 
pretty dense area in Chicago. Uh, one of the things that we didn't do regularly, but um, we've done a few times is just take a walk through all the local businesses, uh, me and, and our, my business partner, and just get to know, um, you know, the local businesses. Right. Um, I'm not sure exactly where that would fit on or how that would be itemized on this list, but you know, yeah. I think something even along those lines, just be as creative and open-minded um, to getting out in front of your local community. Um, you know, don't limit yourself to the, like, yeah, exactly. Like you said, Eric, um, there are countless ways that you can get out there. Um, the point is just to get out there and make right. a plan for it. You can't sit in your office all day. It's just not going to work. It's just, it's just, you're going to get beat to the punch by another gym or another coach or someone else that's doing the things that will help drive your business forward. Okay, the next one, we're second to last one. Um, if you're doing all things in red, which is your business, your company operations, and you're doing all things in blue, you're getting eyes on your brand and eyes on your message and eyes on your company, then you should be able to make the green, which is any specialty training programs. Now this is aside from your group membership. I can't tell you how many gym owners we've had a conversation with. The only thing they offer is group exercise. That is a starting place. And quite frankly, wasn't even the real CrossFit starting place. It's a starting place, though, to generate revenue. But it's one of many, many ways to generate layer upon layer upon layer of training or nutrition related revenue specific to your community. What we like to do is to provide different opportunities for folks who have different needs. What this doesn't cover is ongoing fundamentals or on-ramps. This is how you solicit or filter your new business. Any one-on-one -on -one or semi-private training because that's an ongoing every day, all week around the year. That also doesn't include custom individual design training specific to individual clients. These are either template-based or semi-private-based very specific, say, sport models that interested parties could purchase and then do at your facility. As much as I don't like the open gym model, this is exactly where the open gym model supports. Rather than saying we are a coaching facility with excellent coaches and excellent programming and excellent equipment, oh yeah, but by the way, over there is open gym, you send two opposite messages. Open gym is basically selling access but not selling relationship, coaching, oversight, accountability, progress. It's just, there's a barbell and it's 40 bucks a month. When you sell a program and it comes with Open Gym, now people are showing up with intention and purpose, direction, oversight, motivation, and so on. Hypertrophy programs, powerlifting programs, weightlifting programs. Maybe these are ones that you specifically write for your cohort. I love this because you can get into the to the specifics of your community. Power and speed development, aerobic endurance inside versus aerobic endurance outside. Aerobic endurance inside utilizes the equipment you have, your rowers, your ski ergs. Um, not many facilities have versa climbers, but rowers, bikes, ski ergs, versa climbers. Some facilities do have air runners or treadmills, right? Six week aerobic endurance development cycles are fantastic. Outside facilities are executed at tracks or on trails or outdoors where folks can now combine their elevated level of fitness with their beautiful locations in the area. Your mixed modal sport is simply CrossFit, right? In a mixed sense in a sporting season. Barbell and gymnastics seminars are often conducted by your coaches that are subject matter experts in their unique field. You may have one coach that gravitates more towards instructing gymnastics or one coach that gravitates more towards teaching the, you know, the basics or the tenets of the fundamentals of deadlift and squat and press and bench and whatever. And then youth development seminars. These seminars in and of themselves have a chance to uh, fill the gap in your business area. You might have five CrossFits in your area, but none are offering youth programs. You might have 20 CrossFits in your area, but no one's running gymnastics classes. You could have 15 CrossFits in your area and no one's running hypertrophy or bodybuilding or the popularized term in the last couple of years is functional bodybuilding. These things have become very popular because now you're giving your clients options. Rather than saying 179 a month for unlimited group, you now have a membership and options. When you give the client options, you have a chance to improve retention and accountability. As we move further down, we're almost done, I promise. 
Uh, we've got this specifically for our level method specific gyms that are inside of the push press community. This does not include level specific individual design because again, that's ongoing year round. But these are template based cohorts to develop um, the progression of clients, yellow to orange, orange to blue, so on all the way. This is of course loaded for the version two map that just dropped or will drop for the majority of the gyms in January. I do know there's a couple folks though, if not 20 or 30 folks already on the new version two map. But these are eight week programs. You band together all your yellows, they're on this program. You band together all your oranges, they're on this program. It really drives progression, community support, as well as of course, the ability to progress. That's the key there, right? Assess, address, and progress. And lastly, in the nutrition space, of course, specialty nutrition programs, individual versions or team versions. Individual versions are things where you see like whole 30s for 30 days, paleo challenges, keto challenges, zone challenges, 800 grams a day of fruits and vegetable challenges, right? Doesn't matter what your challenge is. The key is that you've got something for your clients to participate in besides the group environment. Again, as you've seen the consistent theme on this column here in the middle, this does not include individual nutrition prescriptions that is ongoing year round. So the left hand column is your year round operations and the right hand column is going to be things that you can layer on top of your already excellent service to further improve the value that your CrossFit or your micro gym provides for the clients. Any thoughts on that, James? Anything I forgot? No, you hit it right on the head. Awesome. Awesome, okay. Last but not least is the fun. If you've done everything in red and you've advertised and you've marketed in blue and you're starting to make a little bit of money in green, then you get a chance to have fun. Always we hear, my CrossFit's the best because of our community. Folks are screaming from the top of their lungs, community, 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 right? Well, if every gym has the best community, who's really is the best, right? Well, let's just take a look and see. Community building events works both externally and internally. It's a chance to take your culture and move outside of your facility and actually do things as a community, not come to CrossFit and just do 5 p.m. class, but let's actually get together and create a relationship, further a bond and carry it on to improve. Now from the business side, we say it improves retention and from the human landscape side, it creates bonds and friendships that can last. This list is not an exhaustive or extensive list. It's just simply some of the best things we've seen executed, both in our facility and in some of the facilities surrounding our area. This is again for both current and future clients. Two of the big things right off the top are what we call bath lectures. And this is a bring any friend lecture. This is construed as like a Friday night town hall or a Friday night lecture, maybe a Saturday morning at 11 lecture. And these are lectured on key concepts and topics that are popular in your community. And the only way a client gets to come to it is if they bring a friend. They've got to bring any friend they like. It could be a coworker, um, it could be a family member, it could be a girlfriend, a boyfriend, whatever, it doesn't matter. It could even be kids if your lecture specifically, uh, specifically addresses youth population. So I just wrote three bath lectures on nutrition, three on fitness. Movie nights and cooking nights. Yes, there are some new facilities popping up that allow you to come in as groups and Cook, whether it's learning how to cook, learning how to prepare cuts of meat, learning how to create uh, great arranged menus. It's a great chance to uh, bond over a meal and or over a bottle of wine. Movie nights are great, especially if you've got a, a young uh, kid population. Local runs, local Ragnars, local triathlon events, and local sporting events. This is something interesting. For the Los Angeles area, everybody knows that Dodgers host a pretty huge affiliate night. Most folks will take their CrossFit logo and change it into some formal Dodger style logo. And there's a couple hundred, if not a couple thousand, CrossFitters that end up at Dodger night. Sorry for those of you guys that don't like the Dodgers, that's fine. fine. You've got to find something in your area. It could be hockey, it could be baseball, it could be basketball, it could be football, whatever it is. The key here is culture. Improve the relationships within and drive an improvement in the culture. Boot brews, those are something that have been restrict our, our ex I should say those, those have been things that have been specifically fun. This is basically a uh, run, drink, run, or a drink, run, drink, uh, locally hosted by a handful of different breweries, to get folks together. Um, and it could be designed around, the next one is a scavenger hunt, but the key there is to support local businesses, engage uh, on the weekends, Friday nights or Saturday nights, 
enjoy something around your community. I know some gyms get together um, and they have a like a local business walk where they'll just go around their local community, stopping at different bars or restaurants or microbrews, and they'll have a beer at each one. And then they finish up at a restaurant for dinner or they start at the gym, they have a great workout and they walk to the first brewery, have a beer, walk to the next brewery, have a beer and then head to the finish line. It could just be again a giant restaurant. Uh, scavenger hunts are similar, although they are designed to increase the competitive aspect and the critical thinking, of course, while running around your neighborhood. Classic 3 2 one go CrossFit events. This is all your normal. I mean, you look on Competition Corner, you look on Watt Rocket, you see that every single weekend all around the country, everyone's hosting CrossFit competitions. So, of course, we've got to load CrossFit style competitions in here. Everyone, or I shouldn't say everyone, the majority of CrossFit we've uh, had a chance to work with do participate in intramural style CrossFit Open. How many of you are doing CrossFit totals? Those are still around. Power athlete version as well. CrossFit total, squat, bench, and dead, right? We know that. What's the power athlete total? Power clean, squat, bench, press, deadlift. The Uptathlon, for those of you guys that are in the OPEX culture, you'll remember back a couple of years ago, the Uptathlon, an eight station or an eight event station um, that changes only one event per year. So you have a chance to actually measure against known uh, variables as you go forward. It's a fantastic event if you've not done it. Weightlifting, uh, powerlifting, as well as the three versions of athlete camps. You can have athlete camps, and quite frankly, this is where we focus on the event X side. Uh, athlete camps specific to nutrition, athlete camps specific to fitness, or athlete camps specific to blending all three, fitness, nutrition, and a little bit of outdoor adventure as a team. Holiday parties, and more importantly, holiday closures. How many of you actually have a schedule that you know ahead of time of what days your gym is open, where your holiday parties fall, what coaches are covering what classes? Is it an abridged class schedule? Do you only have morning classes? Do you have night classes? Or are you guessing the week before Thanksgiving? Annual founder celebration. This is simply the annual celebration of your established date. You should be celebrating yourself, right? We recognize that the business does serve the owner and the owner needs to say, hey, I made it one more year in business, right? So your business turns one, there should be a gathering, a party, a celebration. Your business turns five, your business turns 10, your business turns 15. If you celebrate that, you have a chance to create, again, a strong bond with those that have been with you since day one. So I would heavily suggest some kind of a founder's celebration. Outdoor games, Hoover ball, pickleball, bowling, horseshoes, doesn't matter. Who's taking trips? Who's taking group trips out to the beach, out to lakes? Could be snowboarding, could be skiing, right? Mountain trips. Any state, national park trips, or historical site trips. I know there are plenty of CrossFits in the East Coast that love to get out and hit different historical landmarks. They take trips together as groups. And then, of course, there are uh, communities out here on the California side that are constantly at the beach together. Track and pool workouts, great for locations that have availability to local tracks and or local pools. A note on pools, they get expensive, right? Because you have to have specific insurance and potentially a lifeguard certification if you're going to actually do pool workouts. Boxy box competitions, these are great. This is something like my facility and James facility across the country from each other. 30 day competition, classic CrossFit workouts done of course for time. Angie's, Annie, Barbara's, Cindy, Chelsea's, right? Diane's, Franz, Helen's, Grace's. My participation for my team, his participation for his team. We co-compete and earn points and there are great prizes awarded at the end. It's a great way to develop relationship with sister affiliates across the country. Who's hiking, who's climbing, who's doing any mountaineering trips, indoor climbing or bouldering, any balls or laser tag, skeet trap, axe throwing and archery. Those of you guys who have seen how popularized axe throwing has become. I love skeet trap, axe and archery as one group because that's a huge hand-eye coordination piece and it's great to get folks out together to do things that they don't necessarily construe as fitness but help improve on that neurological side. And then of course, everybody loves finishing up with wine and whiskey tasting microbrew festivals, food truck nights, and barbecues. That list is simply what I've seen, and I know there's more. I know as gym owners, you're doing better, you're doing more, you're doing different, you're doing what's culturally um, significant to your location where your gym is. So that's a, a key piece there. Um, this might be overwhelming to some gym owners that are brand new, but like James pointed out earlier, this is not something you have to do. This is something that you can build into over the time. And the key there obviously is now that you have a business, 
you want to plan. What do you like? What do you want to see? How does it align with your core values? How does it align with generating your appropriate financial steps? Which one of these things then, of course, can be planned to fit into your calendar? Sound good? Anything that I missed on the community building side, James? No. Um, you know, looking at that list as it stands now, there's, there's a lot of things that um, I didn't think of. And, uh, you know, going into next year, we're definitely going to switch up a few of these events and explore different things. So do I have to have an event every single week or do I have to have an event every single month? Absolutely not. I mean, right. just, just having a cadence that, that your members can expect, I think, is the important part. Whether that's every month, every quarter, if they know it only comes twice a year, yeah. that's fine. Um, because, again, it's just it's having that cadence that, that members can expect so they know that there's some excitement built around this. It's not just something that we threw out because, right. oh, Friday, there's nothing to do or, you know, it's, it's not just on the whim. Um, right. But, you know, if we can have all the supporting things to kind of go behind this to kind of build that up and, you know, the, the, the community aspect isn't just the event itself, but it's the anticipation of the event. Right. Um, and that's something that you go over, Eric, in, in more detail with Event X and kind of building that. Um, so we won't go over in that in detail, but I think that's, that's a major component. You know, regardless of how often you do it, what you're doing, um, you know, have a plan, build it up, execute. Um, right. and that, that's, that's it. It doesn't matter what you do. So I, I, I guess we could, we could look at it this way as well, because we're, we're owners and coaches and we have a, you know, if we're looking, if we're looking to our clients to help them improve their consistency in their training or their consistency in their nutrition, if consistency is a theme that we see held by some of the most successful clients, then when the clients look at us as gym owners, they also need to see consistency. Consistency in offerings, consistency in the calendar, consistency in the schedule, consistency in the offerings, consistency. I mean, think about it. If you are inconsistent in all these offerings, you're not providing a service that the clients will look at and go, man, can I, can I dig into this? Can I trust this? If you showcase that you are consistent in delivering on your promise as being an excellent coach, excellent business owner, and so on, and they start to see uniform improvements, man, retention goes through the roof. That and it's also, you know, I'm not going to invite my friends to come to this gym that I don't know if there's something What's going next? on every other month, right? right. But right. if they know there's something to expect every, you know, at a regular interval, um, and they know the quality of those events, right? Well, then it's going to be easy for me to to bring ten friends over because I know exactly what the experience is, right. um, and how much fun it is, and it's not going to be something that falls through, and it's not a one-time thing that happens now, and we're not going to see something for eight more months. Right. Uh, right. We, we know what that is, you know? And so I think that's, that comes back to the whole bigger picture of understanding and, and creating a, an annual plan. Agreed. Speaking of that annual plan, let's go ahead and zoom out for those that are paying attention on the webinar side on the Facebook live side, this might be challenging for you to see, but nonetheless, I believe we're going to have a chance to get this out to you after I'm going to zoom out. Now we'll take a look quarterly six, right? So quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, so on. This is the worksheet side of this. Um, and this provides an opportunity for you to really see how we can layer this out. These, by the way, uh, or this is already dated going forward so for 2020. So the dates, the weeks, they all match up. This is a chance for you to kind of see quarter one, Jan, Feb, March. Now, obviously, this is not something I'm doing because we're preparing to move. But this is something I would be doing if I still owned and operated the gym here in Southern California. What we're looking at here is Let's take a look at kind of our reds and or our blues. You get a chance to see here week by week where things sit and how things are organized, right? So you have mentorship meetings, you have wrap ups with staff members, you've got equipment uh, overhauls and first aid maintenance, you've got team and staff meetings, uh, you're taking a look at your books, you might be participating in the USA weightlifting meet, right? You take a look down in the blue, let me back up here so you guys can see the blue. Uh, you've got external community events. You're running an open house. The next week, there's a speech at a different um, uh, business around the corner. Uh, you have social media, individual check-in and photo contest, always taking advantage of the January hype, right? January is the time you want all eyes on your facility. I mean, obviously, we want it in December to prepare for January, but come January, your social media check-ins, photo contests, video contests, is huge because that's the month that everyone cares to turn a new leaf. Ambassador programs, third week of the month, external blogs. Notice this is for me, I, I write a lot. So 
blog, internal blog, external blog, internal blog, external. And then Friday night, we're getting together. We're outside in the community, right? So this is a chance for folks to kind of see now, is this something that we're doing uh, January the 6th, right? Going forward? Sure. Absolutely. You sure can. Is this something you have to do next year? You have to do all of this. No way, right? Half of you may not even have everything in red or blue or green. You may not be running curriculum where you can overlay six-week hypertrophy and gymnastics programs. You may not have coaches that care to run squat seminars, bench seminars, deadlift seminars. But the key here is these are options. These are always out there for you to do. On the level method specific side, these are the eight-week template-based cohorts, yellow to orange, orange to blue, blue to purple. And they just overlay throughout the course of the year. And as you get closer and closer to the CrossFit season, right, you can layer in different mixed modal pieces or, of course, different competitor pieces. But again, this is designed specifically for you to think about what can you do looking forward, right? So you can say to yourself, I did none of this last year. Okay, well, last year was a big learning opportunity. What do you want to do going forward? Remember, the business serves you, the business owner. That's a key concept. Uh, for those folks that are in, uh, in the two brain world, right? They have to understand that we build the business around our personal goals, our personal values, what we need to see from a financial standpoint, a professional standpoint, an academic standpoint, lifestyle standpoint. And you can't get there. You can't arrive there if you just guess your way through what does next week come. If we're guessing, right, we're in trouble because then we're just reactionary. But if we truly assess last year's work and then at least use this as a framework, you have a chance to say, where could I be based on where you want to be? All right, let me zoom it actually all the way out so you guys can see it. Really what we did is we planned it such that the first two quarters um, are written out. Um, let me think. And then that gives you a chance to kind of say, um, let me do the back two quarters, like as a workbook piece for yourself. Um, we agree that this is going to be done particularly, I'm going to get out of this, uh, we agree that this is going to be done uh, as a sample. So if you guys want to take this, you're more than welcome to just edit out and drop in what you like or drop in uh, what works in your facility, changing reds, blues, greens, and yellows to what matches at your place. And then at the end of the year, obviously you'll see it's just blank because we didn't go into the back two quarters, but really that's where you're going to start layering in uh, things that you didn't do in the front end of the year. So, uh, James, any uh, thoughts or reflections on this, both gym owner to gym owner? No, I mean, you know, I've I've always had an annual plan, but it's never looked as exhaustive as this. Um, and most of it is, it's just internal in my head. So to see this out on a paper, and especially, you know, when you're able to um, to to visually pull back and see the entire year, um, I think that's that's huge. Um, you know, a, a lot of us, especially those are those of us who are, you know, really entrepreneurial, um, just kind of just go, go with things, go with things and have this, this internal plan. Um, but to have it in, in such detail, um, and on a macro scale at that, um, I think is, is a massive tool. Awesome. Excellent. All right. Well, I know that we have a chance to send this out. Um, do you normally open up for Q and A at the end or do we do that, uh, in, on an individual level? Well, what we can do since we've, uh, gone a little long is um, we'll wrap all this up into a, uh, a blog post awesome. where we'll have a downloaded, downloadable version of Eric's spreadsheet and you'll have full unrestricted access to be able to edit that um, to be able to kind of tailor to your business. And then, you know, we'll have kind of the cliff notes as well on um, what we discussed today and just uh, general tactics and, and strategies for being able to, to tackle this on each of the, you know, the, the macro micro scales. Awesome. Um, and then from there, obviously, you know, we'll have this in Facebook as well. So that's always a good forum to be able to kind of have discussions. So I think look for that tomorrow. We'll, we'll post if, if the, uh, the feed didn't come through on Facebook live, what we'll do is we'll post this video up on Facebook and then we can have a, an open forum discussion there as well. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you. I really I'm appreciate good. your time. No, Eric, that was great. Um, thank you for putting this all together. And uh, I know we'll be hearing more of you. Uh, this next year and i'm excited to uh to kind of build on this awesome right on um i saw that dustin asked about where we can access this doc it'll dustin it'll, it'll come out to you guys here by tomorrow absolutely fantastic cool man all right thank you i appreciate your time Eric, thank you
Bye.